Dune, Best Picture nominee. Quote of the movie, Dreams make good stories, but everything important happens when we're awake, because that's when we make things happen. And Skarsgård on Dune, People are hungry to see a fantastic, well-told, interesting story, and I hope that they see something they didn't expect to see. If this doesn't get nominated for Best Picture, I'll eat my shoe. But I've been wrong before. I got a screener for Prisoners and fell in love with it. I was obsessed. I couldn't get over Roger Deakins' cinematography and the music. I loved the performances, and I was convinced the Academy would notice too. What a huge disappointment when it was virtually unrecognized that Oscar season. This was shot in Budapest, Hungary, and Jordan. My tip, watch it once on the biggest screen you can find. That's what we did. The first viewing was just to take in the visuals and experience the film how it was meant to be. The second viewing, watch with subtitles. I think the director and scripty, aka script supervisor, they get so used to the script they don't realize when there's whispers and mumbles happening. Let's talk music, because music is one of the most important elements for great storytelling. You guys know I'm a diehard Hans Zimmer fan, so there's no shade at all. I just want to give credit where credit is due. I was watching the featurette on music, and I'm like, hold up, let's talk about this. This was not some wholly original idea for music. The other world sound really came from Johan Johansson. He did Arrival and came up with using instruments differently and also using voices as a type of otherworldly instrument. Denny has said about Johan, he used human voices to create new mesmerizing sounds that felt like they were coming from another solar system. He was experimenting like a mad scientist. Hans always knocks it out of the park. He surrounds himself with talented people who push his boundaries. And I believe he could be very well nominated for Bond and Dune. It was a good year for Zimmer. If and when Hans makes his acceptance speech, I sincerely hope he honors the late Johan Johansson. I loved Javier Bardem and it's one of my favorite performances from Jason Momoa. Charlotte Rampling is incredible. She's always so, so great. Rebecca Ferguson mumbled quite a bit. I usually love her, but I found I had to go watch it with subtitles to understand some of what she was saying. Did you guys notice that actor who played the Herald of Change? He was amazing. He had this on-screen presence about him. We will definitely be seeing more of him. Welcome to the film arena, Benjamin Clementine. We already knew you could sing, but now we know you can act. A note on marketing. I felt it was kind of a disservice to put the next Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. Uh, not really. We traveled through Middle Earth and went from the Shire and Back End all the way to Rivendell. No, not Riverdale. With Lord of the Rings, I wanted to go back into that world right away. I don't even know how many times I went to see it in the theaters, or how many times I saw the Fellowship of the Ring in total. I like the changing landscapes. I know Dune is a desert, but I would have liked a little more color. Like before they left Caladan, why didn't he pick up some white flowers from the ground on that cliff? Or that moment when he put his hand in the water, he could have lifted some sand, foreshadowing the sand that was to come. When Momoa went into that plant room, it was like a breath of fresh air. We were only in that room for 12 seconds. I know because I counted. Curious why we didn't explore that room more. Our brains naturally need to see other colors, like green. We could have maybe added more color to the House of Atreides. Purples, reds, blues, greens, whatever. Just something to contrast Arrakis. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the costumes and the designs were off. They weren't. They were gorgeous. Even in their bland colors, which is hard to do. I love the use of fabric, and that height they gave many of the characters was great. I love the veil on Reverend Mother. I really enjoyed the makeup. It was so subtle. Denny said, I love makeup when I don't see it. Hilarious, but I guarantee that's what most directors are looking for. There is an art form to being light-handed and delicate. Donald Mowat nailed it. He started with Denny on Prisoners, and I love it when a director keeps the same crew around. The Baron's profile alone was top-notch. Well done, everyone involved. The cinematography was brilliant. We got to give others a chance to shine. However, I would have loved to have seen what Roger Deakins would have done with it, too. No story is really new under the sun. Every story is the same, but told differently, and I've said that before. 
and the best of them have biblical references. That's just a fact. There's an underlying theme of respect and taking care of nature and not just draining the world for our own profits. I'm not going to go into politics and whether you should believe in climate change or not. That's not what I'm saying. But what I will say is that God gave us a gift. He gave us this beautiful world to take care of and protect. No one sane takes a gift and then destroy it. But you handle your gift with care. Frank Herbert was heavily influenced by a Native American man named Indian Henry, or as others called him, Henry Martin. He taught FH to take care of the world and warned him that if we continued to cut down forests, pump oil, and deplete our natural resources, that the world could turn into a desert. It reminds me so much of Avatar and that animation for Ngulli, or the not-so-subtle messages of Lord of the Rings. All I'm saying is let's take care of the gifts God has given us. Comprende? Yo, HBO. Smart move to release it overseas first. It built up momentum and got those numbers going in the right direction. But kind of weird to not have worked out a game plan with Denny for this Dune universe. I'm gobsmacked why you didn't film back to back. Now, I don't know the books very well, so I'm not sure how you can break them down realistically. But again, I love the model of Lord of the Rings. Of course, they couldn't get everything from those books into the films. They're unfilmable. But much like Lord of the Rings, it should have been filmed all in one go, taking advantage of the time and releasing them one year apart. And guys, a trilogy is always a good idea. Also, if I was running a studio, which I'm not, I would partner with theaters to release my films. Why? Because that's what filmmakers intended audiences to see the film in. Not on a tiny screen in their living room or, God forbid, their telephones. Movies were made for theaters and theaters were made for films. They coexist. I really don't care about your numbers on your streaming platform. And I'm not just talking to HBO Max, but all streaming platforms in general. Please do us all a favor and work with theaters. Work out a deal that maybe theaters get six to eight weeks for the film and then you put it on your streaming platform. I'm sure I'll talk about this more in the future. Fun little fact before we go. Denny was disappointed in his first two films that he took a sabbatical as a stay-at-home dad. He vowed to return, quote, when I was ready to make a film I could be proud of, end quote. Imagine if he had given up and stopped dreaming altogether. We can all learn a lesson from Denny. All right, cinephiles, I'm off for some more cinema therapy. More coming soon. Bye for now.